<laughs> All right, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the first testimony tailgate at the first budget hearing of the Joint Finance Committee of Wisconsin. We are taking a moment at the end of a very long day of hearing hundreds of people testify about the issues that matter to them to share a little bit of the reasons about why we are here organizing together with the ACLU of Wisconsin and Wisconsin Public Education Network to stand up for kids and families across the state. I am Heather Dubois-Bernan of Wisconsin Public Education Network and many of our allies from around the state are here today and around the Southwest Wisconsin region. We have heard testimony on a wide range of topics today, but chief among them was the need to protect the future for our children by making a reinvestment in the resources our kids need to thrive. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I'd like to invite our first speaker, Peggy Wirtz Olson, to say a few words about why she's here today to stand up for kids. Thank you, Heather. Again, my name is Peggy Wirtz Olson. I've been a teacher for 20 years. I'm the Vice President of the Wisconsin Education Association Council. I'm here today to really encourage all of you to speak up on behalf of the students in the state of Wisconsin. Our kids deserve fully funded public schools and we deserve the opportunity to be recruiting the best and the brightest educators all across our state. So please make your voice heard and speak up at the next three hearings. Thank you. That's great. Hey. Hi, my name is Emilio Dottore. I'm the Director of Community Engagement with the ACLU of Wisconsin. And I was so thrilled to be here to see all of these hundreds of people, uh, many young people who can't speak here at this rally now because they're still waiting inside to testify. They've been here since very early in the morning and we're only up to about 9.45, even though it's about 4.45. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that we're here too. We understand all too well that our schools are allowing to police, uh, allowing police to enforce school discipline at the expense of our children, that poverty, mental health, alcoholism, drug addiction, and race are all too often criminalized. And these people, these children become victors of these, victims of these encounters and they become incarcerated. We have 1,269,746 children in Wisconsin now, and we owe it to all of them to secure a better and more moral future, and one that doesn't involve a government that is financially invested in their incarceration. Uh, that's one of the many reasons why we're here demanding that we end uh, crimeless, technical, rules-only violations, that we divest money from the uh, budget for the Department of Corrections and reinvest that into public education so that we can begin to reap better fruit in our state and and stop this bleeding out thank you Emilio the other thing that we'd really like to highlight here today is that there is already an agenda on the table for kids around which there is bipartisan consensus in this state. The Blue Ribbon Commission on School Funding that met for the entire year last year going around the state just like this hearing about concerns that people have about their school has made a list of recommendations and we've made an effort to highlight the overlap between those recommendations and the plan that's been put forward by Governor Evers that's being debated and discussed here today. We know that our kids need a reinvestment in special education costs which have been frozen for a decade and for which there is a two billion dollar funding gap across the state in the biennial budget. This legislature needs to fill that gap with the funds our kids deserve so that our schools have the freedom to provide resources that are equitable for every district in the state. And that is a demand that we are making today of our legislature and it's one that we have heard all day long. We know that our schools need predictable, adequate, and sustainable aid. They need revenue limit increases that give them the spending power they need to make the choices that are appropriate for their communities. And they need a per pupil aid increase so that they have uh, some restorations of funds that have been cut in the past couple of budget cycles to deal with that. Our kids need mental health supports, early childhood centers, programs that help us, like Peggy said, to attract and retain high quality teachers. And most of all, our kids need assurance from the state that we are here for the long run to make sure that Wisconsin provides a commitment that allows every community equal opportunity to thrive. 
So we want to thank everyone who took the time out of their busy day to come down to Janesville today, wait in a long line, testify, get their two minutes in front of the legislature, and share the concerns that they have. We invite everyone who's watching this today to do the same thing. Next Wednesday, your opportunity is in Oak Creek. On April 15, your opportunity is at UW River Falls. And on April 24, your opportunity is at UW Green Bay. Show up, speak out. If you can't attend in person, email your comments to the members of the Joint Finance Committee at budgetcomments.legis.wisconsin.gov. It's, it's, on, it's on our uh, website, wisconsinnetwork.org. Make sure, most of all, that you let your own legislature, legislators know where you stand on this budget issue and then amplify your message out to your local community. Let your friends and no neighbors know what you care about and why you think Wisconsin needs to invest in our children and invest in our communities and invest itself on a track towards people, not prisons, people, not poverty, people, not systems that undermine and underscore the success of our children. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope to see you at the next budget hearing. <laughs>